sim racing cockpits. But which one is actually best? Well, it all depends on your situation. There are three different levels of sim racing cockpits, and each one caters to a different audience. So, level one is a desk setup or a fold up cockpit. And I'm just going to go through what those two things mean. So, a desk setup is where you essentially you just clip or bolt your wheel onto your desk and then tuck your pedals in underneath the desk and just use your chair to play on, on your PC and that's usually for less of an immersive experience and more of a gaming experience however it's, it's always better than uh, a controller and then the fold up cockpit is like the frame I'm using here but it's essentially a bit more delicate and it folds up. I'm just going to go through the pros and cons now. So the pros of a fold up cockpit is it's really good if you don't have much space because like the title suggests it folds up so you can literally store it absolutely anywhere if you're limited for space like we were. It's also the cheapest cockpit, still expensive obviously because and it's also just a bit more immersive than a desk setup. So what are the cons then? The cons are the build quality. As for any cheap product, we are regarding it as cheap because sim racing is extremely expensive. So anything under about £400 for a cockpit is pretty good value. Uh, but the cons that come with that are... Firstly, yeah, the, the quality is not always the best. Um, it can kind of go wrong. And the main con is if you have a direct drive wheel, like I do here, for a more immersive force feedback experience, then you're not going to want a fold up sim rig because it's, it absorbs a lot of the force feedback. So if you have your force feedback turned all the way up, you're not going to really feel much of it because because it's so like it vibrates a lot the um, the cockpit it will just essentially absorb a lot of the force feedback so if you have a direct drive wheel you're probably going to want um, what we're saying is level two but if you have a gear drive or belt driven wheel and you're limited for space but don't have a desk set up we would recommend a fold up sim rig something like the Next Level Racing GT Lite or GT Lite Pro. All links are in the description. So, level 2 is like what I've got here. It's a mid-level frame and it's fairly light. I just didn't really know what to call it. Essentially, what it is, is verging on kind of good quality sim racing. Any quality sim racing is good quality sim racing. But it's verging on like eSports level. I forgot to turn ABS on. Um, and traction control it looks like. So this is the level we went for and it's got some good pros and cons. The pros being that it's pretty light so it's easy to move back and forth. While it doesn't fold up, it's still pretty good storage, it's still easy to store. And some of the other pros are, it's much more strong than a fold up rig, so you could definitely use direct drive wheelbases on it, that's what I'm using here. Um, you might not want the strongest, like, newton meter motor if you've got a lower level one of these um, because it might still absorb a bit of the force feedback oh dear but for us it was fine it's not done any of that so it's, it's been alright given that we do have 8 newton meters some of the cons then it isn't it doesn't fold up so while it is pretty easy to move around you, you still need to like you still need to be semi-permanent uh, semi-permanent 
sim rig. Oh, I've lost it again. A semi permanent sim rig. So, uh, one more con. Actually, they are very adjustable, but the con that comes with this is that a lot of these kind of high level pedals have require quite strong braking force. You can tune it so that they don't. But if you're using the kind of more realistic strong braking force, it can just slightly extend the um, cockpit because it, it has like adjustability for how long it is. And if you brake too hard, it can just slightly make it a bit longer. So some of the um, examples of a level two sim cockpit would be a few of the next level racings that there'll be links in the description and the one that we got here the play seat trophy we got the logitech g edition because it just looks a bit better it's not vibrant red so level three is a high grade aluminium sim cockpit and I'm just going to get straight into the pros and cons with this one. A lot of the pros are essentially it, it's designed to work with a direct drive um, wheelbase. So if you have a really high level direct drive wheel and you're looking for something that will support that, this is definitely the best option it's extremely immersive they usually come with good quality realistic seats as well um, and it's really like it's the full package essentially of a like high quality sim rig the cons actually there's quite a few cons they are extremely expensive I'm talking thousands um, for a uh, uh, just the cockpit and the seat but it, they are very good quality another con is it's very heavy so it would have to be a completely permanent sim rig and like they're I, I'm not sure how heavy they are but they're very heavy so if, if you think oh it's fine I could just move it once in a while no you couldn't you'd need a team of people to move it the last one is the build time just because of how big and strong it is it's just gonna be a bit tedious to build and it's it's not gonna take a while well it is but it, it will just be difficult essentially so that's some of the pros and cons however if you do have a kind of a high level direct drive wheelbase um, something like the Moser R21 then it's kind of your only option because something like this as much as it won't absorb force that much force feedback from something like this it's going to take a couple newton meters away if you don't have a really high grade aluminium cockpit so that's the reason why you'd even go for something that expensive um, that you would flipping spend ages trying to figure out how to build and uh, leave the space man what is he doing anyway so that is the pros and cons of a high grade aluminium rig you can get a lot of different grade rigs from next level racing they're a really good manufacturer as I said, all links will be in the description because I can't think of any actual product names right now because it's 8 in the morning, I've just woken up, I've got a race today and I'm recording a bunch of stuff which I'm not even sure if I'm talking about correctly. But there we go. So there we go then. In conclusion, if you don't have a massive budget or you don't have much space and already have a PC then a desk setup would be for you. If you don't already have a PC but have a limited budget or limited space, then a fold up sim rig would be for you. Then you have level two if you have a kind of 
a lower low end direct drive wheel like I've got here, I've got eight newton meters, then light frame would be really really good for you. An example of this would be the one I've got, the play seat trophy. And finally if you have a high level direct drive wheel then a sturdy aluminium frame would be for you because it is the most immersive and I mean unless you don't want a permanent sim rig and £1100 taken out of your bank account then go for this. But honestly I would say the best value for your money would be something from most likely next level racing I would go for the cheapest non fold up frame that they do I'm not sure what that is because I didn't do enough research for this video and as you guys know these videos take absolutely ages to edit it's 8 in the morning of a race day I shouldn't be doing this but I am they're very tedious to make so a like would be definitely appreciated and I mean, we're on the road to 100 subscribers, so I'd love if you hit that big red button also. I'm turning into a proper YouTuber, aren't I?